Ladies and gentlemen, our next performer you've seen before on the Weather Channels. Uh, he was a weatherman, and now he's here doing comedy for us. Ladies and gentlemen, Jeff Gaskin. Alright, thank you guys for sticking around. The rumors are true, guys. My name is Jeff Gaskin. And yeah, uh, before I got into doing comedy, I actually was a weatherman on live TV for five years. And you might have noticed, guys, I call myself a weatherman, not a meteorologist. That's because, well, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with how the TV news game works, but in order to gain the title meteorologist, you have to undergo a minimum of two years of very intense plastic surgery. <laughs> I wasn't up for it. Sorry. But it's funny, before I did that, I studied politics in school, and so a lot of people come up to me and they ask me like about climate change. If I think it's real, if we should do something about it, what should be done? And I'm like, well, yeah, I think the science is out, guys. Climate change is real, and something should be done, but if we're gonna get Americans motivated or even scared enough to take action, we have got to come up with a better doomsday scenario, then Florida will disappear. <laughs> come on. Is that that bad? To me, it sounds like a goal. <laughs> and I'm like, break out the aqua net. Two cans a day on this. This doesn't just happen. But in my mind, I'm, I'm picturing Trump going down to his precious mar a resort to play some golf. He sees it's four feet underwater. You know, his Cheeto orange ass is still out there trying to hit the ball, bobbing up and down like a buoy. And then, and only then, may he finally admit that climate change is not only real, but it's not a hoax perpetrated by China. <laughs> uh, Trump. I don't want to make too many Trump jokes because I know how it can divide a comedy crowd. It's kind of crazy how you know people of my parents' age or their friends of my parents alone will get up and heckle if they hear bad Trump jokes. So I, he's an interesting guy though, and I gotta ask you guys, whether you like Trump, you don't like him, you love him, you hate him, does anyone in here really think they gave him the real, actual nuclear launch codes. <laughs> Come on. Somewhere in the chain of command, in the intelligence community, has got to be like, you know what? I'm going to make this six and eight, <laughs> and save the world. <laughs> Honestly, I think they're filtering the information to him. He keeps talking about how North Korea now has these missiles that can launch nukes as far east to major American cities as Chicago. That, that's it? Just a Chicago? <laughs> They're coming thousands of miles from North Korea and stopping at Chicago? <laughs> Sounds like someone is filtering this information to save Trump from himself. Because he goes to New York City, Washington, D.C., and Florida. He doesn't go to Chicago, so I think if someone were to say, Mr. Trump, uh, Kim Jong-un now has capabilities to hit New York, you see, he'd be like, hold on, hold on. Did you say he can hit New York? Launch it. Launch everything. Launch everything. <laughs> The doc is going to be in New York this weekend, and I'm this close to fucking it. I can't risk it. I do make fun of Trump, though, but I do feel as a comedian, and I'm sure the other comedians might have felt this way, that I felt obligated to vote for the guy. Because, I mean, he provides all the work for us. Every time the guy speaks or tweets, it's like three more setups for punchlines. I love the guy. And good or bad, I do think he is a very inspirational character. Because he has proven that here in America, it's possible for any asshole with a microphone to now become president. <laughs> it's great. I look in the mirror and I'm like, I'm an asshole with a microphone. <laughs> I can see my mirror right there. I got some ideas that can help the country. Maybe I should vote. <laughs> That's why Poncho's in Manhattan Beach. I'm excited to announce in front of you, I'm officially. Putting my hat in the ring, I'm going to run for president of the United States in 2020. Thank you, guys, thank you! And hopefully, I'm spend the last few minutes I have up here trying to win over your vote with some of my campaign ideas. I think I got a little something in here for everyone. I, I got solutions for small problems to big problems. This sucks small. Traffic. Traffic sucks, right? Thank you. Um, I am going to tell you this, though. My first day as president. I am going to legalize marijuana for any American city that has traffic by being here in LA. <laughs> That's right, under my administration, we're going to say, so long to road rage, hello to road rage. <laughs> oh yeah! <laughs> problem solved, let's move on. Bigger problem, the economy. Remember when Trump was running on this plan that he was going to improve the economy?
economy, three to five percent in its first turn. Now it's pretty good to know. I, I got a number for you, because to me that sounds like peanuts. How about twenty percent improvement in my first year guarantee? I can do that, Joe. Thank you for asking, concerned citizen. Let me tell you. I am going to double down on what works best for America. I'm sure you guys are aware the American economy always strongest in the fourth quarter. Why? Because of all that holiday spending. That's why, as your president, I'm going to add a second Christmas to the American economy. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, if people are going to wait in line for three days and trample over children just to spend some money, I say let's bring back that spending enthusiasm and child trampling twice a year. <laughs> and here's what we do: put it in the middle of summer. Use my birthday, July 18th. Perfect. You know, what's good for me is good for the country. I will sacrifice my birthday so everyone else can celebrate. Kind of like Jesus. <laughs> I got bigger problems. We solve the economy. Let's move on. This is crazy. You guys ready for this? I'm going to put it into hurricanes. I know what you're thinking. You're like, is this guy a weatherman or the weatherman? <laughs> I'm going to put it into hurricanes. This is a cool idea, and I'm amazed Trump hasn't thought of this. I mean, come on, there's a movie coming out this week, Geostorm, all about governments controlling the weather. So this is a movie, it's possible, right? Here's, here's what I'm going to do. It's going to be expensive, so I know how to fund it. Trump has not noticed this, and as a businessman and a media whore, I'm amazed. Because there's a huge amount of money that we're not tapping into that America could be raising. In the form of naming rights to these tropical storms. Think about it. I mean, I'm sorry, but for far too long, storms like these named Jose, Maria, I'm sorry, they've been coming into America and taking away good American named storms from people like Bruce, <laughs> Tony, State Farm. <laughs> we have much better, more profitable names, and they're getting all this free media coverage for weeks, so let's turn this into a profit. And here's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to take the money for the next 10 years from the name price for hurricanes. And I'm going to build a giant fucking wall in the Caribbean Ocean that's going to stop any of these storms from turning into hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, you heard it right, guys. I'm going to build a wall, and I'm going to make the hurricanes pay for it. <laughs> I got one last solution before I leave you, folks. And this is a big one, too. I'm going to bring peace to the Middle East. Right? Doesn't it sound like a hard thing to do? Not to me. I was like, this is so easy. Every president that's come before me for like the last 50 years is trying to figure this out. And here's the problem. This goes to the two-state solution. Never gonna work. The Jews and Palestinians can never peacefully coexist in the land of Israel. But I have a solution. One of these groups has gotta go. Gotta move out of there. That's the only way to do it. And as a Jew, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not even gonna play favorites. In fact, I don't think the Palestinians should be the ones to leave. Careful. If they did, the Jews are still going to be surrounded by six Arab nations that hate them. Does that sound fun? You're going to go to a party where there's only seven other people, all who hate you, one of them leaves, <laughs> and it's still a fun party? No, no. So here's what we're going to do. We Jews are going to have to, you know, make my biblical times, pack up the matzahs, throw the young and hit that dusty trail. And I know what everybody's thinking, like, where are they going to go? There's no more land out there, right? If you've been paying attention to environmental news, like I do, you might have heard that floating out in the Pacific Ocean what's that word, is a giant island of plastic trash that scientists say is roughly the size of Texas. So as your president, I'm going to take over this island, and then I'm going to take the whole population from, wait for it, New Jersey, and I'm going to put them out there on that island of trash. Then I'm going to take all the Jews in Israel and put them in what used to be New Jersey. We're dropping the R, now it's New Jersey. <laughs> And they're going to look at it. Think about it. It's perfect. It's roughly the same size and shape as Israel. It's just flipped over. You got the water on the right instead of the left now. The Atlantic instead of the Mediterranean. I mean, we Jews are a finicky bunch, but I think we can deal with this change. Because if you guys think about it, it's the perfect solution that makes everyone happy. The Arabs and Palestinians are happy because the Jews are gone. The Jews are happy because they're out of harm's way and they're just a bridge and tunnel ride away from some of the best delis in the world. <laughs> And check this out. The Americans are happy because the Jersey folk are gone. That's a happy bonus no one expected, I know. But let me tell you, the happiest of all my friends are those Jersey folk out there on that island of plastic trash. Why? Because now they have four times the Jersey Shore. And get this, here's the kicker. 
It still smells like trash, so they blew it home. <laughs> Where's my Nobel Peace Prize? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.